This is my 2007 Renault Clio 197 F1 edition in liquid yellow. And I want to fill you guys in on how I've been getting on with it since I bought it around eight months ago. I had planned on filming this video two months ago to make it a six months only review, but the car broke. So now it's working again. We can now jump into it. I can tell you about some of my favorite things about the car, my least favorite things about the car, how it is owning it, and if you should probably buy one. So let's get stuck in, let's go. So the first thing I want to touch on my favorite thing about the car, my thing that made me buy this exact car is the color. This is called liquid yellow. It is a Renault specific color that was, the color was worn on their Formula One winning car. This is the reason I wanted this exact car and I still love it. I'd go as far as say as I love the, the color more now I've owned it for so long. Um, especially when it's clean. In any light, it looks good because it's a st three stage pearl. In every light, it looks slightly different. Under street lamps, it goes a little bit green. Under the, the shadows of our unit here, it is a pure crystal yellow. Absolutely stunning. On every curve, it, it changes. It's just still my favorite thing about the car. There wasn't many of these. I don't want to quote numbers, but I think it was less than 40 maybe i might be wrong you can correct me in liquid yellow in the 197 rs i'm so glad i own it and i think that uh yeah, unfortunately it's probably gonna be with me for a long time now um because i just i like it way more than i thought i was going to <laughs> uh, it looks so cool doesn't it what a cool car i love it another of my favorite attributes of the clio 197 is the widened body the big chunky arches on the front and the rear extended from the oem car really gives this car some massive presence whether it's on the road or parked up in a car park or a yard or wherever it may be on a driveway they just look chunky they remind me of like a little pit bull pitbull puppy you know like stocky and just ready to have some fun and i love that and i love the look of them i love how it brings the body out and just makes it its own unique machine not 1.2 not 1.4 this is the two liter sports car and renault Shaw sure made it have its own unique vibe with the body and i just think it looks so cool man so cool um as you might, might be able to see from that angle the oem wheels i've left them as they were for now but i will be getting spaces to wind them out or getting wheels that are wider to fill the arches more to give the car a better stance but for now i even still think it looks pretty cool even with the original stance so yeah big thumbs up from me another feature of my f1 edition clio 197 is the graphics that comes with all the f1 team graphics stating that it is a world champion team from 2005 and 2006 just to make sure everyone knows you love motorsport and you're a proper petrol head now there really is no getting away from my number one complete favorite thing about this car it isn't the paint it isn't how it looks it's these seats the recaro cs's in my opinion are the best sports seats you can buy for a car that you're gonna use on a road. Uh, I'm gonna leave a link down below if you wanna grab yourself a pair. Uh, offering finance all through my own business. We, I, I rate Recaro so highly. I am proud to sell Recaro and I'm even more proud to have them in all of my cars so that we use on circuit or in a fast road setting. I just think for safety, you can't beat Recaro. For looks, you can't beat the CS and for comfort as well. I'm honest with you as well about something. The Clio is deceiving because it looks like a little car until you park it up against something that isn't actually considered a little car and it becomes a big car. I'm gonna throw in a clip if I can find it of it parked up next to my Nissan Silvia, which is a two door sports coupe from Japan. And this thing towers over it. But because of that, it actually means it's super practical for daily use. Now, I'm gonna open this boot. I don't think my dog will jump in it. Come on, bud, in you get. Come on, up, up you get, up, in you get. Go on, good boy. Good boy. Sit, sit down, sit, 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 sit down. Come on, sit down properly. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? As you can see, <laughs> why won't you sit? Oh man. As you can see here, this is my dog, Finn. If you've been on the channel before, you've probably seen him. He used to feature largely in the vlogs back in the day. Very healthy boy now. Uh, after some illnesses, but he's a big dimension. He was on steroids for a year and a half. So he's uh, a big, big dog. Yet he still fits in the boot of this comfortably. Like he has space to sit and lay down when he wants. He's a Dalmatian, they do it when they want. But yeah, it's great. And uh, 
he, we can use the car to go to work. He gets to come with me. I can take him on little drives. Not too enthusiastic. Obviously, I don't want him rolling around in the boot here. But the dog fits in the boot, which is a massive plus for me. Yeah, I, I love that. I, lo I love that. I love that I can take my dog with me in it. Come on, in. out you get. Good boy. Now, guys, I really want you to understand that this is just me touching on some of my favorite and least favorite things from since I've owned the car. I'm going to be going into huge detail about Renault, their hot hatches, and why I think this is a hot hatch legend very soon in a future video. So make sure you stay tuned because that video is going to be pretty goddamn cool, I think. But for now, let's jump back into this one, and I'm going to tell you some things I don't like about it. Time for my first negative point about the car. This front bumper fitment is terrible. I don't know whether some clips have broken in here over time because these are plastic, but this keeps popping out. I thought maybe this car just had a little bump maybe at some point and it has been put back together, but I've had a look at my brother-in-law's car and my little brother's car, which is just over here. They're both the same, basically. Uh, Liam, my brother-in-law, has a 200, so it's got the different front end on it, and his front bumper here is funny as well. So not quite sure why they all do that, but it's pretty annoying. For someone that loves to have body lines that all just fit together, um, it's annoying, super annoying actually. Like it's really annoyed me even just talking about that. Wow, that's I'm gonna have to get that sorted somehow. Other things with the Clio that really annoy me. The can you hear that? Let me zoom that in so you can see. It's just tacky, you know. It's just just horrible plastic, and it, none of it really fits that great. And it's just a bit. Ugh. Non magnifique. I only have one mild complaint about the car as a daily. It's that the technology in it is obviously from 2007. So it's not this car's fault because that was when it was built. But it doesn't have Bluetooth. It doesn't have any uh, connectability for iPhones or anything like that other than an aux cable that's just terrible and it's not long enough to put up on the dashboard. I need to change all of this really. Or I'm going to look to see if I can get like a single DIN Apple Play thing maybe. Do you have it a little bit more modern and a little bit more uh, user friendly in uh, today's world that we're kind of used to? It's just us being spoiled, but um, that'd be a small complaint. Like no Bluetooth. I could probably have a parrot thing fitted, but I think uh, if a single DIN Apple thing exists, I don't quite know. But let me know if it does. I, I don't know. But um, yeah, that's a small complaint. Also, this is, this is a horrible color. This silver. I'd like to change that. I'd like to... Does anybody make carbon ones of these or black or... Do I just paint this black? I'm not quite sure, but um, I'd like to change change that. This is this is something else that I want to talk about right now. Uh, I hope it's going to do it. Okay, so now I want you to join me in the car while we go out for a little drive to discuss how it feels when you're driving it, how it makes you feel, and all that. And I'll catch you back here shortly. We are currently in Colchester, and I wanted to kind of start the video driving-wise here because. This is how I've used the car the most since I bought it. It's been my little, almost like daily to my daily. Um, I've, I've used it quite a lot, just as a little run around, a little town car to, to zoom around in. I love it. I love the size of it. The size of the car is, the size of this car is just perfect. Um, I, you can zoom around. It's got enough power to get you out of a situation or get you into one if you really want to be. And it's just a wicked little town car um, so if you're looking for something like a town car just to zoom around in it's cheap and kind of quirky and preppy enough to zoom around then i think you really like it um some of my favorite features that of the car itself is uh just how simple it is it's it's not overly complicated it's uh you know it's a 2007 car it, they didn't have huge amounts of technology in it but um overall it's uh, a great little town car and it is uh Practical. <laughs> I have a practical car. That's pretty cool. The steering, when I read up on other people's uh, ideas that they had, feelings they had towards it, the, a lot of people were saying they were nervous when they went from the 182 to the 197 because it's got electric steering in this or electric powered steering. I actually really like it for what I use it for. Um, I have done one track day. The steering felt really, really good. Um, on the on the track day itself i found the lift off oversteer the most fun aspect of the car um you could really play with it and it in my opinion that that's the sort of thing that i want from a car where i'm not looking for the most fastest serious driving machine i'm looking for the puppy the the silly little fun car that just puts a massive smile on my face for, for the cheapest amount of money 
and I, and I think the Clio does that. Um, even on the road, just driving it, B lanes, uh, you know, just an, an enthusiastic drive out. You can have so much fun in this little car and you never really feel like you're doing anything that illegal, which is really, really cool uh, compared to, per se, another car that I have uh, access to, my E92 M3, which just feels like I am going to get arrested whenever I put my foot down. So that's where the Clio wins, in my opinion, on this. The car itself is just so good. French do have a reputation for building fantastic hot hatches and I, I definitely think this is one of them. Um, I really, really like it. The seat in position, I find you sit a little bit high, but I feel like you need to because of how the size of the car is, like the, the aspect ratio to how you are in the car. Um, I feel like uh, <laughs> you can't actually see the bonnet. So even though I feel like I've sat too high, I still can't see the, like the front of the car. So I guess all in all, it works out okay. These Recaro seats I've already banged on about are my favorite seats in the world. I love the Recaro CS. These are beautiful, beautiful seats. So, so comfortable. Every journey I've done in it, I never feel any issues with my lower back. See, like just be able to zoom around. It's just fantastic. And it sounds good too. <laughs> I really, really love this car. Uh, while we're driving around, it's got everything you need right to hand. Um, it's got radio controls on the right side, you've got your, your window wipers on the top right, and then your indicators and lights on the top left. I really, really like the simplicity of this car. I like how it just works. It's just, I say it just works, it's French. It might stop working at any moment, but right now, it just works great. And it's just wicked. It's just, uh, it just puts a big smile on my face. And I think that's what these cars were always designed to be. Just fun, fun, great little cars. So one thing I think is really cool about the car is it actually has cruise control. It's a very well kitted out little car for what you pay. Cruise control is awesome. As a car you might use for journeys, I'm going to be taking this up to London a couple of times this week, uh, maybe to Surrey for, for another thing I might have going on. Dials themselves, they're very, very simple and I think that's really nice. It's less distracting, but they do have a little computer telling you the range of fuel, your average MPG and the fuel used and their mileage on the car, etc. since I've had it. I think while we're in the car as well, I wanna talk about some of the issues that I have had with the car. I feel like I'm sat like a right chaff when I'm looking at the camera, but this is how uncomfortable it is what it is. Uh, issues I've had since I've had the car, I've had a couple. On the track day, we had a minor brake failure. Um, I think I boiled the fluid. I have got fluid to change into it. It still works now, okay, so I'm not gonna Plane. I'm not going to do it just yet, but before we go out on another track day, I need to pad to change the fluid to something where we've got the race fluid at the garage to put in higher boiling temperature, which is much better out on track. I had another problem with the car, which was the map sensor went, which left me stranded at a local golf club when I went for a round. Yes, I am middle-aged now and I play golf. It is one of the things that happens to you when you hit your 30s. The round of golf, it was a pretty terrible round of golf. It had been raining half around it. I thought, I just need to get home can't wait to get home it's gonna be great to get home <laughs> and then start it and it went was, engine was getting no spark trailing it back took it to the local garage and it turned out that it was a uh, map, map sensor so irritating yes cheap to fix Meh. wasn't that cheap i think it was like 130 odd pound plus them fitting it i probably could have done it myself but i was too lazy and i didn't have the diagnostics kit so just pay the garage to do it, which is fine in the end. Uh, works great again. And uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying using it, if I'm completely honest. Oh, is it on fuel? Right, I can tell you. On the little, I'm gonna go off of the Digi Dash, okay? On the digital dash, it is saying I get about 310 miles to a tank and I'm averaging 24.4 MPG. But I am just driving it to and back to Colchester to where I live. So there's a lot of back lanes where I can give it a little hoon. There's a lot of stop start. I haven't taken it on a long journey since I picked it up. I love how lively the handling is, man. It is so pinpoint. Like, it is just so magic. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's so good. It feels alive and it feels connected. And it doesn't suffer with the same bump steer issues that other cars that use McPherson struts seem to have that I've driven in the past. Um, the bump steer on this is manageable and it's actually kind of enjoyable in some situations. Oh, servicing. I know servicing will be a question that people will ask. I haven't got round to servicing this yet. It hasn't needed a service since I bought it. I'm only about eight months into ownership and uh, it had just been serviced when I got it. But the screen is saying it is due soon. 
So I will be looking around at a Renault Specialist. One of, I met at a track day called Beanie Sports said like he would quite like to do a service on it and have a look around the car. So maybe we'll make a day trip out to him, see the sort of Renaults that he's got and go a bit from there. Um, see what sort of rare ones he's got. Like, I really want to deep dive into cars again uh, and uh, learn about more of this. I've really enjoyed learning about the Clio and uh, there's a whole lineage of vehicles that I haven't ever really played with. So. It's gonna be really exciting for me and I hope you guys will join me. So hit subscribe on the channel and if you really fancy it, hit the little bell so you get notified when I met post a video. In a second, whip her out. <laughs> you can ring the neck of this little engine, man. Oh, I love it. It's, oh, it's so good. It's, it's so good. It's definitely, definitely great for what you get in the package. Like. A lot of people said to me that I wouldn't like this and that it wouldn't be as good as the Type R's and stuff that I've had in the past. But honestly, I think I'd pick one of these over a Type R right now. Again, I did already, I bought this one. Um, I still think the package you get is a better deal right now. And people are making case swap packages for these now. So if the engine ever goes pop in this, I know what I am gonna be swapping in. So I wanna kind of summarize this from a perspective of mine. I've always admired these cars from afar. I never thought I was gonna own one. But with the price of the stuff that I used to be fully, heavily involved in, the Hondas, the Nissans, and all of the Japanese stuff, just going through the roof price-wise, I felt like I should look outside of my usual circle. And I ended up with a Clio 197. And I'll be completely honest, I am so glad I did. This car has absolutely blown my expectations out of the water. I genuinely thought I was going to have it just for last year. I thought I'd have it for about five, six months, sell it, maybe get a project for the channel, maybe do some trips abroad with it for the, for the YouTube, because this is like, this car was never meant to be a permanent thing here. And I took it on a track day. I had a bit of an issue with it, with the brakes, which you may have seen. The video is gonna be linked in the top left corner. So if you wanna check that out, please feel free. Um, I had some issues with the brakes with it, and it kind of left me wanting more from the car. I was like, I have to sort these brakes out now, because I wanna come back and give this another go. I want to put a proper alignment on it. I want to maybe put some coilovers on it at some point. I kind of want to see how far we can take this on a bit of a budget and just enjoy it. Do some road trips. I'd love to go to France, um, meet some of my friends down there and just take the car around to maybe from French car museums, some French race tracks, just have an adventure. Uh, after being locked away for the two years with COVID, really struggled with, with all that. I think it's time now we use what we've got. I can't explain how much I love this little car. And I think you will love one too. Uh, I paid, I'm gonna be completely open, I paid 5,400 for this. Limited edition, beautiful condition, Renault Clio, I got for 5,400, which is the same sort of money you're gonna be paying for an okay condition EP3. And I just think, bang for your buck, this is. Other things that you could get, these are such a great purchase. They're cheap to maintain, they're cheap to run, they're very cheap to insure, they're super fun. They're not fast, but compared to other things, I guess you could see them as kind of quick. They're quirky, they're lively, they're exciting. And what more could you want for a fun, cheap car that you can daily drive comfortably? I daily drive this. I mean, I, I recommend them. I highly recommend you getting one. Make sure you get one with history, make sure you get one that's been looked after. I, I couldn't, couldn't think of a better car to spend your money on right now other than one of these. And apparently this one is gonna go up in value, I got told, I don't really care if it does or not. It'd be cool if it did, but I think we're gonna keep it here for a while, if not a long time, like I do with most of my projects, because going forward on the channel, we wanna try and get as many feature cars to tell people stories and have a real look around cars and actually start exploring car world in this new 2023 and onwards. So it's gonna be lots of cool stuff coming to the channel. So if you do like it, please subscribe and it would mean a lot to me. And uh, if you share it, give it a like, leave me a comment down below, you'll be entered into our competition that's announced every two weeks on the Monday on the community page. You'll be winning a bright yellow 621 banner because we're repping the yellow car in this video. And in the next one, probably, I'm gonna do a whole like actual piece on these soon, uh, a bit more journalistic type thing. Uh, Cause uh, yeah, I think it'd be cool to do and I think it'd be fun. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Please make sure you subscribe and I'll see you again in the next one, hopefully anyway. Uh, yeah, see you later, thank you. Should we go for a walk now? Proper one.
What are you doing? How are you doing, you mad dog? Hey, why wouldn't you sit down properly? You've been eating horse poo. I can see it on your saliva. You are so gross. I'm not wiping that off yet. Go away. Get out of here, you poo eater. Get out of here. Stop following me. Stop.